In this Corcon training video, we're going to explore several ways to add cost codes to a new estimate and two ways to add locations. To illustrate these features, we've already selected a lead. And if I go down to the estimates and RFP packages, you can see I've already created several estimates. We're going to use this first estimate. Notice that in the estimate property details, that we've already added a auto populate cost code and select the code level, in this case lowest, and I've also enabled locations. Then I'll click view estimate. We've already added two cost codes to this estimate. Let's explore some ways to add more. First, I'm going to select the show internal grouping so I can see the estimate cost codes here on the left, which are estimate specific. So if I need to change the descriptions, and also show our internal groupings, or what's also referred to as the master cost code list, in this case at the division and the major level. To add our first cost code, we're gonna to go to add import, and we're gonna add manually. Since I've already established an existing master cost code list, I'm going to be adding information exactly the way it appears from that master cost code list as an estimate cost code. So we'll add the cost code itself. This is the estimate cost code. We'll give it a description. We'll also add the division code, which is existing conditions, and a major cost code. Since I want the internal groupings to match the information from my master list, I'm going to use the generic description provided. But since this is an estimate cost code, which can be customized and is estimate specific, I can change the name. And I can save and close. The next method to add estimate cost codes to our estimate is to import. I'm on the estimate cost codes tab. I'm going to go to add import and we're going to import from the master list. I'm using the CSI 2016 and Quircon realizes that because I selected that as a default in the estimate detail properties. I'm going to go down to division nine. Under special coatings, I'm going to select the concrete and masonry coatings. I can do more than one at a time. So let's also go down to division 10 and select traffic signage and click import. We've added two more cost codes at the same time. The next method uses an auto populate or dynamic means of adding the cost code at the same time I'm adding an estimate item. For that, we're going to go to the items tab and add a new item. But before we do, let's take a look at the cost database. And I'm gonna use work items as the example and just to show you where this information is coming from, I'm going to show you the item first in the cost database. This is a railing system. First, you can see that the item has no costs or revenues added. Those are optional. But if you scroll to the bottom, you can also see that I've already added a classification or default cost code for this item. These can be added manually or imported from an Excel spreadsheet. Back to our estimate. This will be the first item I add to Division 5. If I click back over on Estimate Cost Codes, notice there are no cost codes starting with Division 5. So when I go to Items, and I go to Add Import Items, and Add from Cost Database, I have the option to switch to Auto Populate Cost Code using Cost Database Item Classification. Using the same CSI 2016, I'm going to use the local database and the work items in that database. I'm going to just select Division 5 at a higher level and click Select and then Get Items. I'm going to switch the page size so I can see all items without going to different pages. I'm going to go back down to the item we were looking for, put in a quantity, which is optional, and click Add and Close. Corcon added the item and the default classification as an estimate cost code. It also added the division, major, and minor from the master cost code. If I switch back over to estimate cost codes, 
you can see the item has been added here as well. While we're here, we've been adding these in a different order. If we wanted to resort these and reorder the number, I'm going to select all, go to global changes, reset order number based on internal grouping codes, and click apply changes. It rearranged these in chronological order and updated the order number column. We also want to talk a little bit about locations. Locations are optional. There's a help article that will help with this. We'll switch over to the Estimate Locations Overview article to show that these can be used creatively. Locations is a way of organizing your data in a format that's presentable to your customer or client. Ways that this could be used are residential locations by room, commercial locations by room, these could also be buildings, and usually they're used because the cost codes are duplicated from location to location. I'm going to go back to our estimate, go to locations, we'll go to add import, and let's add manually. And assume for a moment that our customer wants to see our proposal broken into sections. So we're providing them one proposal with multiple locations or sections. So we'll make the first location and we'll call this grouping division one. I can take this to an additional level so that these locations are also tiered. For example, building one, floor one, building one, floor two, and so on. Then we'll click save and close. Another way to add locations is to import from another estimate. So we'll go to add import, import locations from another estimate, the source can be either a lead or a project. I'm going to select project for this and an estimate. Since I've used these before at a different project, I'm going to select locations two and three and click import. These locations can be added to items from the items tab by selecting the items, going to global changes, update location, and we'll select the first location and click apply and change. Since we're going to need these things in the additional locations, I'm going to select one of the items. I'm going to go to global changes. I'm going to copy items and apply it to the second location. We'll do that one more time and apply it to the third location. Now, if I change the view on the items tab to first by location and then by cost code, you can see the three locations are included. I can also show location only. This will allow me to print out the proposal with similar items, giving subtotals by location on the customer or prospects proposal or bid form. If you'd like to know more about the information included in this training video, we encourage you to go to the help articles, to leads and projects, down to estimates, and view the categorizing estimate items using cost codes and locations articles.